based on my last video, uh, I've concluded that people seem to be enjoying me solving things using regular expressions um, in weird and wonderful ways. So I've decided to impose that constraint on this problem as well. So I did it with uh, checking if the king was in check in a different video, and I'm going to do it for Connect4. So for those not familiar with Connect4, you probably are. Um, but this is Connect4. You have to get four in a row. Take it in turns to uh, insert your counters. Now, the goal of this challenge is given a board uh, which is populated in a two-dimensional array, find out who the winner was. If there was a winner, and if there wasn't a winner, uh, the game could be in progress or it could have resulted in a draw. So a hyphen represents an unoccupied space, which means the game is continuing, assuming there are no winners. Um, but if the board is full with red or ye and yellow counters, then the game is over. And if there are no winners, it's a draw. So let's dive into what I've done. So as with the chess-based one, I managed to produce a pretty concise solution, um, which is just matching the various orientations of uh, a win. Um, so with this regular expression, we're using back references um, because, well, you have to match the same color along a particular diagonal, row, or column. Did that the wrong way. Whatever. Um, and, yeah, using back references to refer back to the color. And it's pretty simple, actually. If I jump over to here, so if we had a red, red 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 here let's say so that's pretty easy um you're just going to match th uh, four r's in a row pretty simple so this quite clearly shows the regex for matching a red or yellow counter followed by the repetition of that same match three times so it's going to match either four r's or four y's um and that's assigned to this match here. And we check at the end if the match equals a string of four R's. And if so, we return an R, which represents that red has one. So the astute of you will have noticed that this scenario creates a problem for us because if we're just blindly concatenating these rows together, uh, this is going to result in a string of characters, which is four R's, but it's not actually a winning state for red. So the solution that I've come up with for that is similar to the king in check one. When we concatenate this all together, we just make sure that we have a delimiter at the end of each of the rows so that this match will not actually happen. And that's achieved by this here when we join the array elements together. Now, something worth pointing out here is I'm doing something slightly different than I did before with the chess challenge. Uh, before, I was uh, actually mapping the array elements to the correct thing. And here, I'm doing an implicit type conversion um, of the array into strings. I think calling the join method uh, tries to just coerce everything to a string, uh, which I didn't actually know you could do quite so easily uh, before this particular challenge. Um, but with hindsight, it's pretty obvious. So given this code here, if you were to just concatenate an array directly with a string, uh, it will coerce this array to a string and it will produce this comma separated list or string rather of um, characters and it also works with infinite nesting i think um so you can have something crazy like this where you've got lots of nesting of your arrays and at each level it's just going to coerce this to a string and then this to a string and then all the way to the outer level coerce this to a string and it quite elegantly results in a perfectly comma delimited list of values in a string i thought that was quite nice personally
Doing that has its downside though. So we end up with these commas in our string. Um, so we just remove them with the replace method here. It just so happens that doing it this way, slightly shorter and more concise, albeit much less readable uh, than the mapped version. Writing it out in this way brings me nicely on to the reason why I opted to use look ahead rather than uh, just matching like we are here. So when we match like this, we end up with a string of four characters. I thought, huh, well, we want to return this single R. So why not only match that single R and ensure the following characters match with a zero length um, match in the regular expression. So that's what I did. Uh, and I did that using a look ahead. So this is the syntax for a look ahead in a regular expression. And you can simply add it in like this, I believe. So there we go. So that means it's going to match this character, and then it's going to form like a hypothetical uh, and check what we would match next. And it's going to match the thing that we matched to begin with, uh, the, the back reference, which would be either an R or a Y. It's going to match that um, three more times. Um, but this, this section in the look ahead is not going to actually result in um, a, a, a match. Uh, being captured in our uh, return value is more of an assertion about what must be there um, in order for the regex to, to pass. It's kind of like the end of string or beginning of string assertions that are zero length. And of course, that means this whole section is now unnecessary. We can simply delete it and return the match. The solution for the other directions follows a similar pattern that we've seen before. Um, so going in the this diagonal direction, uh, we of course would need to match uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight characters uh, along here, and then match an R again, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight characters and match an R again. So that is why we end up with this one right here. So yeah, we match. Oh, let's put the little pipes in. Um, yeah, we match eight of any character followed by the uh, thing that we matched in the beginning repeated three times to match the entire diagonal. And similarly, if we're going in the opposite direction, um, it's going to match one, two, three, four, five, six uh, characters before we hit another of the same uh, that we originally matched. And again, exact same thing. And in the horizontal position, sorry, vertical position, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we match the same character again. And that's how we end up with this one. And this is essentially going to match now in all the different directions. So the only thing left to do is to map the resulting matches to the correct values, which we've already done. Uh, we've matched the red and the yellow. But what do we do for a draw and for when the game is in progress still? When I was thinking about how to detect an in-progress game, it occurred to me that any game that's in progress must have these dashes in. So we need to test all the positions of the board for a potential match uh, for a winning position and get right to the end. And then we need to test for a hyphen. So how do we do that? And I came up with the idea to use a look behind. Now, my original idea was to do something along the lines of uh, matching the end of the string, and then having an assertion here that was a look behind assertion. Oops. 
and then just asserting for a hyphen followed by any number of dots, uh, any number of any character, which would assert that there was a hyphen in the in the board somewhere. And that worked fine. Now there was some complication. So if, yeah, that was it. So I, if that matches, then you get an empty string as the match. And you can use that empty string to differentiate between no matches, which I think returns null. And that's how you can then decide between an in-progress game, which matches the hyphen, and a draw. So we got to the end of the string and didn't match anything. So we didn't match any winning positions and we didn't match any hyphens. That would be a draw, which would return null. But it got me thinking about a more cunning solution. So where here I decided to use a look ahead um, so that the match itself is the exact thing we need to return, I came up with the idea to just concatenate the string on the end in progress draw. Now, that then allows us, rather than matching the end of string character to assert that we're at the end of the string, at the end of the board, i.e. we didn't match any winners, we could instead match this. Now we just have to put this before the uh, check now because um, otherwise we'd have to match that which we could do um, but yeah we'll just check that we hit a hyphen at some point during the board and then just match in progress and when this matches uh, the match itself will be the exact string that we need to return uh, as stated in the instructions uh, here now if it's draw we have to return draw so what else could we do? Let's have a little look. So if this one doesn't match, then simply match draw. Because if it doesn't match any of the winning positions, if it doesn't match that the game is in progress, then we can simply match that it was a draw. And this, I believe, should work. Let's test it. Oh, failure. Let's see what the problem is. Oh, I see what I've done. I've just forgotten to wrap these in look aheads. So I'll do that now. Okay, still not working. What's the problem? I see the problem. It's this rogue bracket that should be on the other side of this repetition. So it's repeating the match for this section but it's matching the same character three times, the literally the exact same character. It should be matching the three sequential characters. And in order to do that, that repetition um, quantifier needs to be within the bracket to match this back reference three times rather than the look ahead three times. So I'm hoping that should now work. Still doesn't work, but probably for a different reason. Oh, I have to actually fix my code rather than just the code I copy pasted to console log statements. Still no cigar. I also forgot that I need to wrap this section here in brackets as well, because we want to match this section repeated. We want to match eight characters of anything followed by our specific thing that we're looking for. And we need to match that whole section three times. So let's just add this in as well. Great. So we're on the right track. I think that's pretty close to the final solution. The only thing left to do is to merge all of these regular expressions into one the one that I've got up here, which is it's the only difference really is that they're just separated by these optional um, things. And, and yeah, just merging these cases together as well. 
and putting this in the exec method call. So I'll just do that. So there you've got it. You've got the four possibilities for the angle or direction of the counters. You've then got the look behind to match and assert that there's a hyphen in the board somewhere, followed by in progress, uh, matching the in progress uh, so that it's nice and returned to our, uh, from our function. And then finally, just matching this draw uh, text right at the very end, if it doesn't match anything else. And that's it. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any requests, please submit them in the comments below.